rapid environment for audio production, engineering, and recording, or Reaper for short, is my doll of choice, my digital audio workstation. And um, you may have noticed this if you've seen pretty much any of the videos on realhomerecording.com. And for a very good reason, actually several reasons why I choose Reaper over many other programs. Uh, I started my professional audio recording and engineering life with a program called Coedit Pro. Unfortunately, the company at the time, um, Centrillium, was bought out by Adobe. Adobe then pretty much, um, they tried to improve Coedit Pro. I mean, they added multi-track recording and mixing, but it never, it, it, it's just so, un, it's unstable and it's slow and it's still a good program for doing many basic editing of audio files, but I can use a free program called Audacity and do pretty much everything I need in that and use Reaper for multi-track mixing and other different things. So, I've tried Pro Tools, which I'll use if I'm coordinating with somebody else. I don't own it. I've used it at companies or organizations I've worked for, but it's just not my cup of tea. I, I don't like, number one, I didn't like the way it looked. Uh, Reaper, you can actually go over here and see themes. And the default theme, I, didn't re I don't really like that. Then we have Classic 2.0, which makes me want to um, I mean, I, you know, I, <laughs> like most of you, I do my mixing in a dark room and this just looks like I'm staring at a car headlight. So I usually use default 3.0. I really like the way this looks. It's easy on the eyes. Um, sometimes it's hard to read the text, but as far as an overall look, this is most appealing to me. And uh, I believe this is <laughs> Reaper version 1, which kind of looks like Pro Tools. But uh, yeah, not a fan of that one either. So I'm going to go back to my default 3.0. And um, the biggest things for me with Reaper are, number one, stability. This program rarely crashes. I'll go months without this program crashing. Other dolls, not so much. Reaper is extremely reliable, and if you've ever been in the middle of recording something and your program crashes on you, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Or when you're in the, in the middle of mixing and you forgot to save your project. Same deal. A lot of wasted time, potentially embarrassing, and um, it could cost you money. Stability is number one, and Reaper is... I think the most stable program, you don't need a, f a new computer to use it. I can probably use my old Pentium 2 450 without, you know, without this thing, you know, breaking a sweat. I, I wouldn't do a lot of mixing on it, but recording, it's fine. But uh, I've definitely not had a problem with stability. Uh, another thing I love is this. This is the change log. Back when I started realhomerecording.com, this was on Reaper version 4.02, I believe, and this is now December, just, uh, let's see, three and a half months, maybe four months later, and we are talking for version 4.14, many, many bug fixes in the past few months, um, uh, some features have been added, you know, this is all generated from user feedback. And you can see what they've added. I mean, the guys over at Kakos, the company that makes Reaper, they do a hell of a job with this program. It's it's really grown since version 1.0. I started using it at version 3. That's really when it started coming into um, <laughs> not so much beta usage. And uh, I love it. Version 4 is great. Version 3 was just as good. Um, version 4 because I do a lot of video editing work. That's my bread and butter. You know, I can directly, I can look at the video in Reaper. I used to just edit it, edit the audio and not have anything to look at, but now 
now you can do that with Reaper and uh, it's, it's getting better. And other things that are, are great about it include the price. $60 for somebody. I think it's basically they work on the honor system. If you make under 20 grand with audio engineering per year, your license is only $60. And that includes two major versions. The version that they currently have, which right now is four, as well as version five, all the way until version 6.0 comes out. I bought it at version three, and that's why I have version four. Version four costs me no money because that's, that's just how they work their licensing. Great idea. I love it. And I mean, they release so many updates. It's not because the program's bad. It's just that if, you know, somebody reports a bug or they got a feature request or something's just weird about, you know, whatever's going on or some new plugins not working properly, they'll fix it. I mean, they'll do a good job of coordinating with them. I mean, they're, I'm not saying it's going to run 100% on everybody's system, but on every computer that I have personally used, that's a Windows machine. I haven't tried it on Mac yet, but every Windows machine that I've worked on, which includes XP, Vista, and Windows 7, has worked pretty much flawlessly. I can't say that about every program. That's for damn sure. The other thing, you know, flexibility. This program is ridiculous with it, the amount of options you have. Just rendering alone um okay project settings i mean i can choose from a variety of different you know sampling rates i think i can even type in you know some weird ones if i want it to yeah yeah it supports that as long as your hardware supports it i know it has good 32-bit plug-in to 64-bit bridge built in it's got a damn good pit, pitch shift algorithm. It's a uh, bit rate down conversion as well as uh, the sample rate is really, really nice. Uh, I'm going to show you some render options. I mean, this is, this is incredible, which you can do AIF, Wave, Monkey's Audio. Here's a new one for version 4, DDP. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, but um, when you're making a CD that will be glass mastered, DDP is pretty much the best way to go. Now, their integration of DDP isn't so great right now. It's still a work in progress. But if you can use it, which they give you a nice little, little manual here. I just clicked the, uh, the question mark. That's um, right underneath 44100 hertz to the left here. There, it, it tells you a lot of information. And DDP, DDP, if you are doing glass mastering of a CD, is the way to go. As opposed to burning a CDR music CD. You also have FLAC, good old MP3, good old AUG, which unfortunately hasn't really caught on, but... And then you got some other options. WavePack and FLAC are some of the formats I use a lot when I'm archiving projects and I don't want to take up a lot of hard drive space or, or uh, DVD space. Very good lossless codecs. And that's just the rendering. I mean, the other thing I love is you can make a render queue so that you can, you know, let's say you have an album full of songs and you don't want to waste time having to sit at the computer or coming, you know, going away for 10 minutes and coming back or a half hour, however long it take, it's going to take to mix down your mix. You can set every single project to render and throw it in the render queue. And then once you're ready, hit render all and you're good to go. And you can go to sleep or whatever you know, go to the mall, <laughs> whatever you want to do, you can let the computer take care of it. And that's something that a lot of dolls do not have. Just again, the flexibility of this program is insane. You can do, I like big clock when I do my, you know, when I do a radio show, I'll have this going and I can expand this, you know, <laughs> I don't have really good eyes because I've been using a computer since 1994. So, uh, this big clock, you know, 
it's de- it's definitely big enough for me to not even use my glasses with. Another thing with plugins, what I love about the the fact that the price is so you know the price of this program is so cheap, it allows me it allowed me to basically all these plugins. Now some of these are free, but um, the ones that I paid for, you know, had I bought another doll, I could have been spending six hundred plus dollars. Or at least, you know, I think most are like 250 and above. You know, that right there is a $200 savings at minimum, at max. Uh, you know, that's 10 times the amount of re- Reaper cost, $60 versus $600. And that's, that's money I, 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 I use to spend on third-party plugins. Now, the built-in plugins that you can, you can find, just type in REA, which I must have typed in something else. Um, yeah, our, all the REA plugins, they're 64-bit. And uh, 64-bit DSP, uh, as well as, I believe, uh, yeah, I think there's just 64-bit all around. And they work pretty well. RIA EQ is a nice, clean EQ. RIA Comp is also another nice um, compressor. I don't really use RIA Verb. I, I have, a, I have my, my, Lexa, my LXP plug-in for that, but... um. You know, just the fact that it has a lot of nice, good built-in plugins. You know, the only thing it doesn't have is a sample library. It has a little bit of a synthesizer in it, but if you're looking for a sample library, that's where that money savings that I was just talking about comes in. And, and in that case, I would recommend OmniSphere for synth. Um, I use Sample Tank for my sample library. Complete. From native instruments is another option, but again, you know, this is money that you saved buying a Reaper and using Reaper that you now have to buy those third-party sample libraries and, th- and synthesizers, those virtual instruments. Um, in my case, I, I, I record a good amount of live music, and I got uh, AmpliTube and um, a lot of IK multimedia plugins are nice. Yeah, T-Rex. So anyway, Reaper, incredible program. I started using it, I think, three years ago at this point. I wish I would have started using it sooner, but I guess version 2 wasn't so good from what I heard, but version 3, you know, now it's coming into its own. They don't really advertise Reaper in, like, magazines, but I know that a lot of them recently have reviewed Reaper version 4, and it's getting a lot of praise. And as far as I'm concerned, that program that rhymes with toe pulls, yeah, toe pulls would uh, is the industry standard, but it is definitely not top of the line as far as I'm concerned. Is Reaper top of the line? Possibly. It doesn't have, like I said, it doesn't have a lot of stuff that some people might require. I love Pro Tools little, um, their music notation where you can make MIDI and then ex, you know print out a music sheet from your MIDI. That's an awesome tool. And you know, there's a lot of other things that Pro Tools does that's pretty cool. But as far as I'm concerned, if Reaper had come out at the same time as Pro Tools, Reaper would probably be the industry standard. And as more and more people find out about Reaper, more and more people you know, we'll use Reaper. Reaper is, a, like I said, word of mouth, and that's the only way I can get this out to people. And, I mean, I'm I'm constantly on message boards reading about audio engineering, and I think I'll be sticking with this program for a long time to come. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com. See you next video.